Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 11.17. One of the most important things in a constantly evolving game like League of Legends is being able to adapt with the meta. And that's why we're here for you. If you want to know what's going to be OP before the patch hits, you got to be ready to hit the ground running without having to test to see if one buff or nerf really made that much of a difference. And if you really don't know how to play any of these OP picks or you're just a little bit rusty, this will give you just a few days to brush up on them in normals or on a smurf. Granted, these are all predictions created by our analysts here at Pro Guides, but they're normally not wrong. It's just a list of champions that we think are going to be some of the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. We'll start things off by talking about Lucian, with his shiny new buffs that are making him much more of a bot lane pick. If you haven't already been seeing what's happening, basically Lucian has had an extra effect added to his passive. Now when an ally buffs Lucian, his next two basic attacks deal additional magic damage, stacking up to four times. This new passive gives Lucian crazy synergy with certain champions, specifically anybody that can provide him with multiple buffs throughout a fight. But don't worry, it won't just work with enchanters. Allies procking his W's mark will also trigger this effect, so tankier supports will be able to lane with him without having a new passive going to waste. You'll just want to be reliant on landing the W in the first place. In addition to the new passive, Lucian's ultimate has been changed to scale with crit chance, with the stats increasing the number of shots that you put out. As a result, you're heavily incentivized to build him as a standard crit marksman, so he's less effective with the niche builds that you'd be seeing in the solo lanes. All in all, Lucian's lane phase is a lot stronger now, so you can actually play him as a bully that he's meant to be. Lucian is a type of champion who can actually give you early game agency as a marksman, so this should be a welcome change for all you ADC mains that regularly complain about that sort of thing. Whether you're trying to learn to abuse the broken champions on this list, or how to deal with them when you end up on the wrong side of the matchup, if you really want to speed up the process, you should check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like Core JJ, Aphromoo, and X Smithy to really help you understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized one-on-one -on -one experience, our top-tier coaches are available 24-7 to help you at any time that you need it. Whichever option you choose, stop spinning your wheels on your own, and get on the fast track to hire ELO today. Now, let's get back on topic, shall we? Our second champion that we're going to be talking about this patch is Nami. She's slated to get a few buffs that we think are going to push her up to being the new go-to enchanter. One of Nami's selling points is how strong she is in the laning phase and how tilty people can be in solo queue. And with how tilty people can be in solo queue, winning lane is sometimes more than half the battle. More so than any other enchanter, even Karma, Nami provides a ton of presence in lane. Her W is a main reason for this, and to get optimal results, make sure that you're positioning for the bounces. On top of her main ability getting buffed, Nami also pairs really well with Lucian. In fact, we think they're arguably going to be the best bot lane on this patch when played together. Up next is another enchanter in Sona. Her 11.16 changes have left her in a very, very good spot. To the point where she's one of the best performing champions in the role across all elos. Like with most big changes, Riot wants to wait a bit to see where her win rate falls after people really get the hang of her before they start making adjustments. So for now, you have a completely broken support at your disposal. Unlike Nami, who is all about bullying the lane and trying to snowball a lead, Sona is a complete scaling pick. Her laning phase isn't exactly awful all the time, but in certain matchups, you'll definitely feel the pain. Any bot lane that can just jump on you will usually do so again and again if you aren't careful, so you'll want to be able to practice playing safe in lane if you ever want to actually scale into the game. Once you do learn how to survive that treacherous laning phase, well, the wait is going to be worth it. Sona provides a ridiculous amount of utility in fights, especially extended ones where her constant buffs really start to add up. And when you have a new passive fully stacked up, and you have a decent amount of haste, you can even potentially land two ultimates in a single fight. How crazy is that? Sometimes a champion pops out of nowhere and Riot is quick to instantly nerf them right back down to the depths of the negative win rates, and others, they turn a blind eye, completely ignoring a champion at the top of several patches. And this champion quite literally pops out of nowhere. In this case, it's Fiddlesticks, and he's been a top tier pick since last season. He's long, long overdue for a nerf in some way, shape or form, but we're still not seeing this one go around. Fiddle's success really comes from how insanely strong he is in the mid to late game team fights, and how consistently he can make it to that part of the game. Unlike other scaling picks in the jungle, Fiddle 6 is pretty safe against being invaded. His drain makes him a pretty strong duelist, especially if you have a camp to heal off of at the same time. And the fights that you can't win, you can usually just escape by fearing your opponent and then just walking away. So with him carrying the fight so insanely hard if he's not shut down, and that being next to impossible to do so, he'll continue his reign of terror, likely until the end of the season at this rate. While he may not have been quite as OP for quite as long, Kane is another champion that will be holding a top spot in the jungle. With a lot of the other top picks being hit with nerfs here and there over the past several patches, he's risen up as one of the best in the role again. Ross is the go-to form at the moment too, so you don't exactly need to be a rocket scientist to do well with him. With how incredibly easy he is to pilot, pretty much anybody can pick him up and have a strong impact on the game. 
Early on, his super quick clear outspeeds almost all the other champions in this role, and while he doesn't really have CC aside from his W's minor slow, the ability to walk through walls does give him a decent gank opportunity on overextended opponents. Once you do have your form unlocked, you can 1v1 just about any other champion in the jungle, and once you have a couple of items, you can be a nigh unkillable drain tank that the entire enemy team has to try to burn down. A champion that I'm actually glad to see on this list is Rek'Sai. The jungle champion pool has felt like it's been the same champions rotating in and out for months now, and just like with Kane, Rek'Sai moving up to the top is a result of these champions finally getting some nerfs. Rek'Sai is the one super aggro turbo ganking jungler left in the meta that you can call an S tier or at least a very strong A tier pick. When it comes to pressuring for lanes early, no champion does it better. Rek'Sai's ability to tunnel over walls means that opponents that try to take even one step too far away from their tower are susceptible to being ganked. And once you gank an opponent and blow their flash, their lane is as good as over. It's super easy to repeat gank with Rek'Sai again and again, especially when you have your ultimate to dive the target. Rek'Sai's biggest weak point is the fall off that happens later in the game, since it can be pretty hard to reach squishy targets in a 5v5, but she's not totally useless. Just try to make picks in sidelines or an opponent that's rotating through the enemy jungle before everybody actually groups up for an objective fight. Next up we have Vayne. She's yet another champion who rose to the top not because she was buffed, but rather because about every other top tier ADC this season has seen some pretty huge nerfs. Despite being considered one of the best hyperscaling carries in the game, Vayne isn't an early game slouch as a trade-off. In fact, with a good support matchup, you can even make Vayne a strong laner, where you can bully and even straight up go for 2v2 kills. Vayne does especially well with Nami. With her being buffed this patch, Vayne is technically getting an indirect buff as well. Speaking of the classic bot lane hard carry champs, Thresh is also holding this bot on the list. But unlike other champions, he's not here because Riot chooses to ignore him. Actually, Riot has nerfed Thresh four times in a row, but they just can't knock him down. He's simply too good at all the things that he does. Thresh is maybe the most flexible champion in the league. You can play him super aggro in lane, constantly moving back and forth to whack your opponents with the fully wound up auto, and go for a flay on opponents that get too close, or you can 180, choose to play back, and flay to prevent an opponent's engage attempt. You can even throw a lantern to light up somebody's path and just bring them back home. His versatility also carries to the later stages of the game, where you can choose to be a frontliner that goes for picks and tries to lock down high priority targets, or a backline warden, sitting on your ADC and peeling for them. His massive amounts of disruption makes it basically impossible for divers to get past you and onto your ADC, and when that's not enough, Lantern is one of the most broken escape tools that you can give to a carry. Taking a look back at the jungle again, Amumu is a pick that I'm actually kind of happy to see. Like I said earlier, the jungle pool has been a revolving door of some of the same champions for a while now. Prior to this patch, when you wanted to gank with the Mumu, you'd normally walk into lane, queue to the minions, and then ult your target. Even with your ultimate CC, most opponents can get away. With how long of a cooldown a Mumu's ultimate is, not getting a kill with it can be pretty tilting. With the buff this patch giving them two Q charges, the extra chain CC with their ultimate means that you have a higher chance of actually bringing down targets with your ganks. Now, let's branch out and talk about Maokai. We predicted Maokai top lane would be a strong pick last patch due to the buffs that he got to his passives, health restore, and boy, we were right. He's a top tier pick, winning most meta matchups. And like with any other tanks, picking him means that you're also providing a big old beefy frontliner. So he's a welcome addition to any team comp. On top of what already makes him so broken, Divine Senderer is getting nerfed this patch. Though it's only losing 5 AD, a nerf is still a nerf, and that's an indirect buff to Maokai. The one thing I'll say about Maokai is to be careful about picking him into Darius. Darius has been picking up in popularity and win rate recently, and he's one of the tougher Maokai lanes. You can definitely beat him if you use your W to dodge his Q, but the main thing is managing the wave, disengaging fights with the Q, and waiting for your jungler to come help. Earlier, Pantheon was one of the most broken champions in the game. Thankfully, they were able to reel him in, but he wasn't happy about being out of the meta for too long. Seemingly out of nowhere, Pantheon has come up from the pits, becoming a top tier pick in both solo lanes essentially overnight. And with his design, when Pantheon is strong, it's an incredibly frustrating experience for whoever has to deal with laning against him. He gets to shove you in, go for very hard hitting bursty trades, and if you try to sit all the way back and just avoid interacting, he just ults and kills your teammates. Yeah, I'll make a guilty confession, I actually like playing Pantheon myself, but I can see how anti-fun he is. So here's hoping that Ride does some changes that make him a little bit more tolerable in the laning phase. Going back to the ADCs, we have Draven. Due to how feast or famine Draven players tend to be, I wouldn't say that he's the absolute best carry and go to lock him in now for some free LP. If you don't know what you're doing, it can be hard to generate a lead. And even if you do know, if your support isn't on the same page as you, it can be a pretty frustrating experience. But when everything does go well early and your support is being cooperative, Draven is maybe the most dangerous champion on this list. His ability to single-handedly run away with the game is pretty much unmatched, it just takes a single cash-in. 
Once that ball gets rolling, it snowballs hard. Draven is one of the only marksmen that can deal with fed champions from other roles 1v1. Even if you have 15 or 20 kills on Jinx or Twitch, for example, if a bruiser jumps on you, there is a good chance that you're dead. But as Draven, his massively hard-hitting autos and life still means that you can basically heal through whatever they're trying to do to you. While not a strict rule, a pretty common theme for the champions in this video is that most of them snowball pretty hard. I mean, this is the most dangerous champions list, and generally speaking, the most dangerous champions are usually the ones that can take the game and run with it without you being able to do much about it, right? And that brings us to today's question of the day. What champion snowballs the hardest? We want to know what champion you find completely impossible to shut down once they have a fat lead going. Let us know in the comments down below. And without further ado, let's get back on the video, shall we? Next up, we have Talon. When Talon is in the meta, you always have to be ready for volatile games. He's one of the most snowbally champions in existence, capable of easily one-shotting any squishy champion that you can get a hold of. And with the current meta build being a bit more of a bruiser than an assassin, Talon is pretty low risk, high reward. He can jump in and delete the ADC, soak up a ton of damage, heal up with Gore Drinker, and parkour his way out of the fight if things get a little bit too close. So with the burst of any other assassin, but the durability of your average bruiser, Talon is a champion that can easily take over the game if he's allowed to. And given that just about every single Talon I see gets first blood or at level 2 or 3, good luck keeping him in check. I myself am a Talon main and I don't really like this play style, it's kind of, kind of lame. Anyway, speaking of frustrating assassins, we have yet another set of patch notes without a single nerf aimed at Kha'Zix. In fact, he moves an item that he built in previous seasons is being buffed, so Kha'Zix may end up in a slightly stronger spot. But given that he's already pretty much tied up for the spot of Fiddlesticks, he definitely doesn't need it. True to his character's identity, Kha'Zix can flex between an Electrocute or Dark Harvest page for deleting some squishies, or a Conqueror page with items like Eclipse or Gore Drinker to deal with the tanker enemy team comp and to help him serve as a pseudo frontliner. Finishing off our list, we have Riven. In my personal experience, a good Riven is the hardest thing in League to lane against. They always use E to dodge damage at the perfect time, and it does feel like you can never trade back at them, despite them constantly chunking me out. And if their laning skills are impressive, their team fighting is monstrous. The quick comboing and animation cancels immense damage, but at the same time being so durable, makes Riven an impossible to deal with champion if you don't have just the right tools to lock her down, burst her, and then finish her off. I do want to reiterate that this entry is focused on really good Riven players and their ability to secure a lead for themselves and become unstoppable monsters. That about wraps things up for our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 11.17. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to sub so you never miss out on any of our other content such as this. Remember, let us know what champion snowballs the hardest down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can go ahead and discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.